Summertime crappie, big fish on big baits. Coming up next on Fishing for the Rest of Us. Welcome to Fishing for the Rest of Us. I'm your host, Spencer. If you haven't already, be sure to click the button below right now and subscribe to our channel so you can keep up with all the latest video updates here at Fishing for the Rest of Us. Well, lately this summer, I've been toying around with the age-old question, does bigger bait really catch a bigger fish? And I've found in the case of crappie, yes. Yes, it does. I usually use the little pinhead minnows when I go pan fishing for perch or crappie. They're about an inch to an inch and a half long. But last time I figured, what the heck, I'll get half bass minnows that are about two, two and a half inches long. And when I was using the smaller ones, I was still catching fish, don't get me wrong, but they were about eight to nine inches on average. When I switched to the bigger minnow, they turned into 12 and 13 inch crappie average, which is a big difference in my books. So today we got a whole bucket of big minnows. We're gonna take a few casts out here, see if we can land some big slab crappies. Fish on. There we go, there's a nice crappy. Get him unhooked, oh he was barely hooked. There's a nice jumbo crappy. Jumbo minnows, jumbo crappy. Works every time. Get this guy back in the water. There he goes. Kid fish. So today I'm using a seven foot medium light action rod with a nice soft tip. And you wanna make sure that you have a good flex in your tip when fishing crappie, because they do have very fragile mouths and you wanna make sure your hook set is gentle enough to set the hook without pulling it out of their mouth. We're gonna be fishing these minnows today under a slip float. And right now we're gonna move it into the workbench and show you how to tie this rig. So here we are at the workbench with everything we need to tie our slip float rig. We have, of course, the float. We have some large split shot, some very small split shot, and our hooks. Today, the bobber I've chosen is a Thill Nightbrite. The reason I chose this float is because they're very castable and they seem to do well on live bait rigs. Uh, it is a little bit big and overkill for a crappy, uh, but luckily it's slender enough that they can still pull it under the water without too much resistance. And they are a little more expensive than a regular float, but they do last a very long time, so for this one, it's definitely worth the investment. So the first step to rigging a slip float is I'm going to unscrew this bobber. The caps actually come right off of these still lights. And you can see there's a tube in the middle to run the line through for a slip rig. You can also clip the line onto these bobbers if you choose as well, but I definitely like to do a slip rig in this case. So we're going to take our line. I'm using a braided line today, hoping it'll show up on the camera for you a little more. And we're going to feed it through the hole in the top. Once you have the cap on there, it makes it a little easier to feed the rest of the bobber through. Once you have your line out on the other side, I recommend tying your hook on right away just in case you lose your grip and it falls. You don't want to have to rig that through again. I'm using a slightly oversized hook right now, again in hopes it'll show up a little better on the camera for you. Uh, usually on this rig, I just tie a simple polymer knot, easy enough, feed the line through the eye of the hook, pull through a little extra so you can see what I'm doing. Then you actually take the line and feed it back through the opposite direction. So now you're left with a double length of line on either side. And you're going to hold that double length of line as if it's just one piece. And you're going to tie just a regular overhand knot with that. But before you pull it tight, 
you're going to actually put your hook through this tag end. And before you tie any knot, make sure that before you cinch it down, you do wet the knot to help uh, reduce friction and maintain the line. And then you just pull that down. You've got yourself a nice strong knot. Of course, we trim off the tag end. Now, we're going to take our larger split shot. The purpose of this is just to get the minnow down there, because they will swim up against the current sometimes, so we need something to hold them down near the fish. I do recommend putting them up a few inches from the hook itself, so that it doesn't get in the way of the fish seeing your bait. I'm going to pinch our larger split shot on there. Slide the bobber down. We'll screw the cap back on there. So now you have your basic slip float rig. The line will pull through the bobber when the fish takes it. It'll slide right through and it won't feel any resistance. Now, the only problem is, this will actually pull your bait right down to the bottom. So you need to set the depth. To set the depth, you can use a bead, but those are a little more expensive and a little trickier to use. So in this case, a very small split shot like this will do the trick. All you do is pull the line through as much as you'd like hanging under the bobber. So if you want a foot, two feet, three feet, pull it down. And wherever you want the bobber to stop, you take your small split shot, put it on your line, pinch it shut, and now when your bait pulls the line through, it'll hit that point, stop, and the bobber will stand up right in the water. And you've got yourself a basic slip float rig ready to go. Check out the links in the description below to get all the gear you need to tie your own slip float rig. Now let's get back to the action down at the river. Oh, that feels like a good one. Oh, ho, ho. look at that slab. Whoo. Said it before, I will say it again. Big baits catch big crappy in the summer. When these guys go on a summer feed, they are on fire. Look at the size of that crappy. What a beauty. Awesome stuff. Big minnows, big crappy, big river. Great day. And very slippery mud. Right on, nice fish. So next time you're out crappy fishing and you seem to only be catching the dinks, try some big minnows and you'll be catching slabs in no time. We really hope you enjoyed our video today enough to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to leave your comments below and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and keep up with all the latest video updates here at Fishing for the Rest of Us. On behalf of the whole crew, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.